organization of promoting Afghan women capabilities, which her name is Open. But unfortunately, when I became famous in 2003 and politically formally I involved in politics, I exposed the mask of these criminals. That's why I cannot work with them. Even because of me, some of their projects they lost. But they are still active, they have their own project, especially their project is for women and children. You can help them. They also help me as well that these victim families come in, I send to their shelters, to their orphanage, not only OPA. OPA is really weak now. One, one clinic that we have in Faro province that I established this clinic with so many problems, but now, when two years before I went to Faro, I saw that how much people, they, a lot of were sick coming, but for them about elementary medicine for 50, 60 patients they are giving. Most hopeless fact they go. And also other NGOs, I know they also help me, but most of NGOs are corrupt. My people call these NGOs like warlords, NGO lots, uh, but few NGO, they are really honest. They have shelter, and as I told you, other projects like Hawka, like AFSICO, like raw organization, this is another feminist organization. They also have their problem. When I met with Zoya at the conference, she told me, the member of Rawa, and also Afghanistan Solidarity Party, peace seeker groups, uh, the leader is Haki, they are in the Bamiyan, they are working hard for peace. And also Justice Seeker is another group that they are knocking the doors of these Afghans, collect the document of the files of these criminals that one day to bring them to the court. At least this few I told you, you can contact them. Through them, you can support our people and your money go to the right direction. But for me, I think my bodyguard is a big project on my shoulder. I stand up against gang, but today, unfortunately, I have gang with myself to be alive. How do you defeat the Taliban? if the U.S. leaves, because the U.S. keeps saying we have to stay because other the ta otherwise the Taliban will gain. Taliban yeah, let me, before I answer your question, let me, one picture I'll show you as an example, then I will go to this question. One minute. This picture, you know last time when I came in the U.S., this, this Talib, his name is Mullah Rahmatullah Hashim, a spokesperson of Taliban. You can see this picture. Here, when they destroyed Buddha's statue, he defends. But, but now, he's in the Yan University with suit and tie and looks very democrat, democratic-minded person. Even all expenses, U.S. government pay. If we put all the crimes of the Taliban aside just because of destruction of Buddha's statue, they are unforgivable and unforgettable. He was sending a message to me that, tell the Malala to forgive me to true one after when I had a speech in the Yale University. I said, I'm a person. You can say apologize to the people, expose the crimes of the Taliban. Then this is the people, they forgive you or not. And you know, Taliban indirectly, they had support. I said earlier during my speech that this ten years, thank you. They supported Taliban indirectly. They said through government of Pakistan, this suicide attacks life, took the life of so many Afghans in Kabul and around Afghanistan. And from this muddy water, Taliban also catch their own fishes. The background of the warlords seem like Taliban. You know, Taliban in the religious school of Pakistan, and the Pakistani people call these religious school Talib making factories. They brainwashed by support of ISI, financial support of Saudi Arabia, to the whole of Taliban. But warlords' background, they seem like Taliban. They created, back brought them in power, don't want to lose them because I invested millions of dollars on them. Few books I recommended that help you that you know better their black background. They are like Pinochet, Hitler, Khomeini, Mussolini, Sohato, etc. Bush, they are Bush of my country, imposed on my people. So they are not honest, they support Taliban. And if they tell the civil war will happen. How about today's civil war? Nobody is talking about today's civil war from the sky, also bumping in the ground, also Taliban and warlords together, day by day get powerful. Again, I say that the backbone of the warlords, Taliban, will break. Nobody says that. Nobody expects that when the troops leave, the situation will be like heaven. These terrorists, they are wolf in the skin of lambs. The Stanias, they become powerful. They even hijack the result of the election. International observers are speaking about widespread threat. We have a famous saying, it's not important who is voting, it's important who is counting. <laughs> so they are already in 
our work. They are powerful. And through them occupied my country. We have only two ways in front of us. Do struggle or sit silence. And my people seem like this, what happened in Middle East countries, which glory is uprising. Neighbor country, this Iran, that this glory is uprising happened. All this uprising, which is source of inspiration and hope and strength, rose from the war crisis, the dictatorial regimes. Same in my country, but in my country, take time that they stand up against these towers, the 30 years they committed crimes. Most people not educated, alone woman, half of population, this big power, 87% illiterate. They are. That's why education is the key. And many other people don't have enough food to eat. Unemployment, joblessness, more than 80% are jobless. Many, many other examples. That's why my country takes time. We don't have a powerful party there, unfortunately. Always my message to our Afghan is that let's to be united. Even in these countries, I know some Western fundamentalist men and women even criticize and attack me and many other democratic minded who are activists. They are risking their life. It's still they are underground. And anyway, that the only way for us, to, as I said, we should be united together. And even in these countries, the glorious uprising happened. I'm really worried about. You know why? Because there's, I cannot see a united leadership. They are dictator removed, but the system is still in power. That's the, the constant point. Anyway, I hope one day in my country also what happened. When they leave, we fight two internal enemies. People hate the Taliban, hate the warlord. Kazirism is, regime is good example how much it is weak, while power of the people is like God. I wish what I'm saying to the great people around the world this few years, if it come wrong, I should stand up and on behalf of my people, I totally apologize. But unfortunately, what we are saying, everything come true. Fight against Taliban war are not easy. Please support us. You are the one who support us, the big power of the people, not this war my God. That's why I'm asking you, I'm bigger than you on behalf of my people. Please support us as much as you can. We need your support. We want invasion of a school, clinic, hospital, but not this military invasion, this occupation that should be end. Well, she just answered that 12 questions. <laughs> um, just a little bit more. What kinds of practical support can women in the U.S. give to women in Afghanistan? What kind of practical support? Yeah, this is a question you know always from audience I face. That that's why one chapter of the book I dedicated to this question. But let me tell you briefly. I have a lot to tell you, but I'm sure you have more questions. Sometimes some question I, I have to uh, answer longer. But let me say briefly, John anti-war glorious uh, rallies and this uh, anti-war organization, same, I have a friend said that there is a huge demonstration and I'm honored on behalf of my people I have this speech there. Yeah. Contact your democratic-minded politician of your country, to them put pressure on your government. Contact democratic-minded journalists that who should give the contact of the, those actors in Afghanistan to do interview with them, bring their message to you. And at least uh, to talk about this reality of the so-called war on terror. You can, today the world is very small, like a Facebook, Twitter. You saw that in some Middle East countries, Egypt and Tunis, how much it was, has positive role. In Afghanistan also, it, it, can, it has positive role, especially nowadays among youth, those who have access to the internet, they are thinking about this issue. And it has huge positive impact there. Let's do internet to be in contact. You can be hear our voice. We are coming for one day, for one hour, for two days. Then we are going back. And at least here when you do demonstration, nobody will tell you, nobody will treat you to that. And through different ways, financially I told you that some democratic, honest, Donor, you know, give the contact of these activist organizations and peace loving organizations to support their project. And through different ways, if you do very small support for us, it means a lot. Bring huge positive changes. Okay, the question is how important is the oil and gas pipeline to U.S. foreign policy of the occupation? 
Pipeline is one of, one of the main projects uh, that in the Taliban time they wanted to complete this, their project, but 9-11 tragedy happened, unfortunately. So many innocent American people also died. And also now, one of their main projects is that to make it complete. That's why they do not leave Afghanistan soon, to support of these warlord Taliban. And yes, one reason is this. As I said, they want to Afghanistan have easy access to the gas and oil of the other Central, Central Asian republics. You can read the book of this, sorry. You can read the book of Afghan, um, sorry, Pakistani man, Ahmad Rashid. But I don't, I don't like, I don't know how to do, I don't like this man now because he became pro occupation. But that book on that time that he wrote was really good book about especially explain this, this, um, this uh, role of the, the, this project of the pipeline and also about Taliban give you a lot, a lot of information and wrong policies of these war migrants. This is also a good book. If you want the name I can give you, you can read it. Now that the U.S. has made such a mess in Afghanistan, what would a responsible withdrawal of U.S. NATO troops look like? You know, everyone who commits crime, every justice-loving people around the world, they wish that they should have brought to the court. You know, we wish that when Barack Obama came in power, at least made powerless this minister of the war, Robert Gates brought in power this big genie and this criminal push to the court. <laughs> all, all the crimes of the, what they did in other countries, in my country, we put aside, along what they did in Iraq, is they are unforgivable and unforgettable. Anyway, I hope one day these, these criminals, not only criminal of Afghanistan, not only Afghan fundamentalists, or fundamentalists of other countries, these Western fundamentalists as well. They, they should be powerless, and they should have brought to the court. That's why it takes time. Unfortunately, even the role of ICC nowadays is very symbolic. And we are the one together as much as we should be united. If we will be united, when the enemies just get united, why we should not be then? Slowly, slowly, we can bring them because they have, at least in my country, I, I know that I see how much our people hate this bunch of killer warlord, also Taliban. Among the heart of the people, they have no food, but they impose by gun, by power, by dollar on my people. And see when in these other countries, it take long time, that's why it's a prolonged and risky struggle. We have to do a lot of sacrifices for good cause, for democracy, women rights, human rights. It's not a bunch of beautiful flowers these war mangas gift us. So that's why always I say, I don't fear death, I fear political silence against injustice. So let's to be united and together raise our voice against these war mangas. And I agree with Martin again, dear Martin Luther King. He says, there come a time that silence is victory.